You know, the other thing that I've noticed, which I think you probably have too, is that if you look at a lot of these polls that they are doing, they generally do everything in their capacity to avoid acknowledging that there are third party candidates. It's always this head to head matchup. Which is how they get the poll results that they prefer. Mm -hmm. That's the thing, which is why I people polls are so, so hard because literally how you present the question changes the entire dynamic of the poll. And it's just I, I just I don't trust them. So I don't trust polls. This is an so for those of you who don't know, Angela Rye is an attorney. I believe she's based out of Atlanta, if I'm not mistaken. She is definitely in the Democratic Party establishment. And there was a dust up that happened earlier today, but you had to know that this was coming. Why? What is she in in the party? Is supposed to like Jill's there as a presidential candidate. What is she there for? That's a very good question, and I hope that uh, Charlemagne will eventually answer that question. Other than he's really. A tool. Well, but well, let, you want, yeah, because I'm not a huge fan of him. Well, if you wanted your viral moment, you got it. And here it is. Is the talking point of AOC the other day, who is taking her marching orders from the DNC? This is exactly what it they is say that we are only running for women president. Of color as parroting talking points. Okay, so here's the problem right off the bat. This is the reason, probably as much as any reason, that people are sick of the Democratic Party establishment. Because even when there are circumstances like Trump going on stage the other night and saying, listen, the Haitian migrants in uh, Springfield, Ohio, they're totally eating your cats. And it's like, okay, that's a terrible statement to make. And it does have racial undertones. But when you say racism is at every corner and you're going to bring up this idea, how dare you question a woman of color? It's like, this is the type of stuff that turns people completely off to politics. They're like, I don't want to be involved with this shit. Why would I be? I actually don't even like the whole person of color term. I actually find that kind of just annoying. I do. I find it annoying. The other problem- There's no, but what are people of color? We're all colored. We're all different. Actually, technically, we're all shades of brown. Every even single me? person, even you, and I'm talking on that, you're the inside of the, of the paint spectrum. But like- there you're way on the inside of the spectrum, but everybody is a shade of brown. So like, I actually really have come to dislike the term people of color. And I think that doing, having generalizations discounts different issues that different groups have. And it allows certain people to sort of use it in a way that really they ought not like certain people we have known that have used that every type of thing. So, you know, I'm so just saying, what, I don't like the term people of color. So continue. So what was it? So then what is Angela Rye's motivation? Why would she feel the need to throw that at Jill Well, Stein? first of all, if you, you're saying she's a Dem operative person. I would say that she's definitely a Dem established So then person. she went to Overwoke University and she's going to sit here and do her Overwoke nonsense to distract from any legitimate economic issues. And she's going to do that because that's what they do in this whole party. That's the entire point of the Democratic Party is to distract you with Overwokeness so that you don't focus on the actual economic issues. Colin, can you That's also can, can you also pull up the tweet from Liz Smith uh, who went after Jill Stein? You can also pull up the one from AOC, but the one from Liz Smith I think was very telling because the response is said it all. The other thing that I really don't think people truly understand is that it's not just that the Democratic Party has moved so far into war hawk territory because they've become engulfed with the neocons. I welcomed them in with open arms, but there is still that overeducated liberal class that believes that they are better than everybody else. And this is a prime example of such. But we'll finish out this clip. I'm not sure if this- I don't know. Right. Yeah, I'm glad I don't know who this is. Instead of us looking at basic math, the one thing that AOC has done that you haven't is win some election. And it is- So, okay. Yes, because she was backed by an entire infrastructure and operation that did that in a party that was kind of asleep at the wheel at that election at that time. Not only That's that. That's the only reason. Not only that, but to be fair. Oh my and God, heard these Jill signed like as if she could even get a foothold. They, she spends all her time fighting lawsuits to be kept out of Listen, like, the election. Kamala Harris is going to have somewhere in excess of, in, in just keep in mind, this is in a, what, a five month window, four month window. She's going to have an excess of one to one and a half billion dollars to spend. Could you even fathom that type of money? No. And the point is, when you've got that type of capital and you're throwing that at something, could you imagine how much damage Jill Stein could do if she had $20 million to her name? They would lose their mind. They would. They wouldn't know what to do. You know how many balloons you could get for a balloon, for their big fancy Whoa! balloon drop? Whoa!
<laughs> that's how you get, you know, that's a lot of balloons that you get for that amount of money. Before we bring Jordan in, I'm sure Jordan is aware of what happened earlier today. This goes without saying that when AOC decides to go after her, nobody needs talking points to know Jill Stein hasn't won so much as a bingo. Get You see, again, when you, when you go there, there's two things that are happening here. One, it's showing how Thin-skinned, and you really are a politician because almost every politician is as thin-skinned as, as anybody that you could think of in society. But this is Jill Stein. I thought this person didn't matter. And you're treating her like you're like a scorned uh, you know, ex-girlfriend or something like that. Like This is really what I would consider to be beneath somebody who apparently is going to run for president in 2028 if Kamala doesn't win. I or will president laugh in 20 so hard if she ever. First of all, I don't think she could win a statewide race, let alone a nationwide race. I don't. Well, she is watching out for Chucky the Shoom to retire. In Good a few for her because she doesn't have the balls to do it while he's still there. Um, no one does. Jill Stein does. See, that's the thing. This is when when people mock other people in this way. To me, it's just like, yeah, you wish you had. You wish you had that spine. You wish you had that. Like, there's no reason to say anything like this except for the fact that you have some serious insecurity, but also that you also have now attended the Hillary Clinton School of Condescension. And 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 let me tell you, that will go about as far as the deplorables. And on top of everything else, all and I said this last week, and I'll say it again now. All you're doing is helping Jill Stein. So you know what? Keep doing it. If, as far as I'm concerned, anything that creates more momentum to help the people in Gaza and the West Bank, great. Because the more that she looks like a threat to actually upend this election in favor of Trump, maybe they might do something. But you know what? Maybe they won't because I don't think they really care. But if Alex actually cared, then she would be part of that solution. But she really doesn't care. It's just really, it's just pathetic. Actually, it's really I love how she's talking about building organizing infrastructure as if she's done that. I'm so curious what infrastructure she built. It's not a good look above everything else. It's not a good look. And you and, fought and organized and won, please. And when you're siding with people that clearly, again, please. when you're siding with people like Liz Smith and Dick Cheney oh. and you're crapping on somebody like Jill Stein, you know, you're supposed to be extending the olive branch and saying, you know what, we do need to make a better effort. Otherwise, Jill Stein could ultimately cost us the election again, like she did in 2016. Here's hoping. Here's hoping. This time around, I think Jill Stein might actually cost you the election because she didn't cost you shit in 2016. No, you wanted to keep saying that. Now that's going to be a self-fulfilling prophecy. But this time, especially in Pennsylvania and Michigan, Michigan, it might very well be that case.